journalist Louis Lamour once said to start writing, no matter what. The water does not flow until the faucet is turned on. In today's video, I will be walking you through my essay writing routine step by step, real, legit and true. So get comfy, get cozy and let's begin. Number 1. Rules to follow, baseline set. The first step in any essay writing routine should be to read the instructions provided by your professor and truly understand what elements in your paper he or she will be looking for. Because you can submit the best essay in the entire world, but if you've missed the key points that you are being graded on, you will inevitably get a poor mark in the end. I highly recommend you highlight these key elements so that they stick out and you don't run the risk of overlooking them. Make sure you know what type of essay you are expected to write, is there a word count, a strict page limit, and should your references be MLA, APA, etc, etc. Once you have read and understood the instructions, open a blank Word document and begin setting up your baseline. This simply means creating a cover page, inserting page numbers, headers and footers, and preparing your bibliography. Number 2. Brainstorming. The hunt begins. In my opinion, this is by far the hardest yet most exciting part of writing an essay. This is where you hunt for inspiration, proof and ideas for your paper. My personal advice to you is to let your curiosity and personal interests guide you. I highly recommend you do your research on peer-reviewed scientific and in other words legit databases and websites. I usually go through my university library portal since it gives me free access to a lot of such resources. My personal favorite websites are ProQuest, ScienceDirect, and JSTOR. But if you want something easy, free, and familiar, Google Scholar is a lifesaver. If you have never used it before, I would like to show you four really cool things about it. Some articles you will not have full access to because the database or the scientific journal they are in might require a paid subscription. A way to know if you are indeed able to read or even download the full article is to look on the right. If a link appears, then you have a full article at your fingertips. Another great feature is the ability to select the year of publication. As best practice, I generally try to find articles that have been published within the last five years. But this depends on what type of essay you are writing, of course. Moving on, if you particularly like an article and want to find more of the same, simply click the button Related Articles and voila, the work is done for you. And finally, to save you a lot of time, if you do decide to use the article for your paper, simply click the Cite button under it and check this out. Incredibly helpful, right? Number 3. The Gathering. After quickly going through a lot of potential contenders, I select around 10 to 20 articles I want to read more in depth. But how do you select them? I usually rely on the abstract, the introduction and discussion sections to determine whether or not elements of the article could be used for my paper. Some of the questions I ask myself in the process are, can I quote from this article? Can it serve as inspiration or guide me in the direction I want my paper to go? And finally, can I use this article to back up my statements, ideas, and conclusions? Once I have all these articles downloaded, I open them one by one. I extract from each one the key points, quotes, and arguments that I find relevant for my paper. Simply copy and paste them in your Word document and make sure you note down where you took these extracts from to avoid confusion or plagiarizing once you write your paper. Now, mind you, your Word document will be a big ball of mess once you are done, but I find this method extremely helpful because you will only have one thing open when you have to write your paper, not like 30 billion tabs that you go back and forth from, which honestly gives me a headache. Number 4. The writing process. The second big phase of an essay writing routine is, you guessed it, actually writing the paper. The first thing I do is read all my extracted passages and try to take the time to set up my skeleton or outline. 
Remember, like I say in all my videos, planning is not a waste of time. I plan out the overall structure and flow of my paper before writing anything down. The core topic I decided to focus on is depression and suicidality amongst university students. I then divided my paper into prevalence, associated factors, and preventative initiatives and resources. Once your layout slash skeleton is in place, writing is so much easier as you have everything you need in front of you. It simply becomes a question of filling in the blanks, expressing yourself effectively, and bringing everything together. As you write your paper, if you find yourself using passages, quotes, or statements from the articles you selected, do not forget to cite them correctly and immediately fill out your bibliography. Plagiarism is not okay, even if it's done by accident. So please take five minutes to read the article linked in the description box of this video that gives you helpful tips on how to avoid plagiarism. On a different note, a little secret tip I have for you when writing an essay is to try to incorporate in your paper some concepts keywords, and theories you've learned in class. Teachers absolutely go gaga for this because you blatantly are showing them that not only were you attentive during their lectures, but actually understood what they taught you and are able to actively apply the concepts correctly. This is critical thinking. This is creativity and innovation. And this is worthy of an A+. Number five, the things we tend to overlook. If you're writing your essay the night before it's due, or if you've been working on it for weeks and cannot for the life of you look at it again, you might find yourself guilty of neglecting these two critical steps, proofreading and styling your paper. Once you finish writing your essay, I strongly encourage you to get a good night's sleep and then come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes. This will allow you to spot silly mistakes that when too close to the project, you might have overlooked. Asking a friend, a sibling, or your parents for feedback is also a great idea because second opinions are priceless. And finally, taking the time to make sure that your paper looks clean and professional can be the difference between an A and an A+. Be consistent in your fonts, citation style, and line spacing. Also, do not submit mushed papers or coffee-stained anything, really. You wouldn't show up to an interview in your PJs with ketchup on your shirt, would you? Then use the same rule for your paper. Dress to impress. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe to me if you like what you see because I post videos every Monday and Thursday. Bye guys, stay curious.